I'm loving it. <laughs> I am just thoroughly loving it. It is just too good. Sometimes some things are just so good you just you can't stand it. You just you can't deal with it. You just kind of like fumble along and you go, man, it's just so good. And you know, today's kind of like that because it's kind of cloudy, kind of warm, kind of sunny, kind of this, kind of that. But you know, I had a chance to talk about God today. I like that. I like talking about God. I like talking about Jesus, you know. And I like sharing what He's doing with me, you know, and kind of spending time together with Him as I'm doing it. You know, it's it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like life. You know, like real life. I mean, really living it. You know, really living the kind of life that Jesus said we could have, you know. And it's like, I, I just want to do it all the time, you know. It's just like, ah, oh, I love it. Because today, you don't know this, but I'm whipped. <laughs> I am beat down. I am exhausted. I am so tired. I am going to be crashing probably before dark. <laughs> I'll be out like a light. But the things that give me life, the things that give me energy, the things that keep me going is sharing and talking and daring to be there with God in a place where I know He'll take over and allow me, His Spirit, to be one with Him in heaven and on earth and make that connection between Him and I so that through this video communicative device that we've used for the utmost to be aware of how He can use each and every one of us to the utmost of our being that He can take us and wring us out like a watch cloth just every ounce of water from the Holy Spirit that we possibly have that He can use that to touch one life even one soul of one living being and I go, yeah I love it. Ring me out, Lord. Ring it again. Twist it. Twist it. Twist it. Get everything out of me. Because you know what he'll do with that washcloth? He'll put it in the sink and fill it up full of water again. I love it. I can't explain it. All I can tell you is do it. Try it. You'll like it. Enjoy it. Because when I talk about Jesus, it's like, oh, he just kind of goes, ooh. And I'm just like, oh, and I'm like, ah. But then as soon as I'm done talking about God, you know, or someone interrupts for some reason and I have to quit talking about God, you know, and talk about something important, you know, that they think is important, you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really glad about the Final Four. That's college, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, Super Bowl is interesting and the Olympics are coming. Yeah, who's running for office again? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah kind of, it's interesting, you know. Yeah, okay, I know, yeah, we probably should talk about the economy, you know, and worry about that, you know, what's going to happen in Israel. Yeah, you know, it's kind of same old thing, another story, another day, you know, did it again. But you talk about Jesus, and I'm like, yeah, he's coming, he's coming, Jesus is coming. Man, let's go tell someone about it. Let's go share with them the good news that they don't have to be bummed out. They don't have to be living a life of being beaten down and downtrodden and like, you know, kind of heavy duty stuff wearing them down and making them feel like they just don't have a life. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I kind of like being whipped. I like being wrung out. I like kind of giving it all to God. The unrelieved quest, feed my sheep. John twenty one seventeen. This is love in the making. The love of God is unmade. It is God's nature. When we receive the Holy Spirit, He unites us with God so that His love is manifested in us. When the soul is united to God by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that is not the end of it all. The end is the the end is that we may be one with the Father as Jesus was one with his Father. What kind of oneness had Jesus Christ with the Father? 
such a oneness that the Father sent him down here to be spent for us. And he says, as the Father has sent me, huh, even so, I send you. Peter realizes now, with the revelation of the Lord's hurting questions, that he does love him. Then comes the point. Spend it out. Prove it. Don't just say it. Do it. Love those that don't love you. For it's easy to love those that love you, but love as I have loved you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Go out and choose to love. Don't testify how much you love me. Don't profess about the marvelous revelation you have, but feed my sheep. As Jesus has some extraordinarily funny sheep, some bedraggled, dirty sheep, some wolves in sheep's clothing even, some awkward, budding sheep, some ridiculously naked sheep, some sheep that are just shorn, some sheep that are worn, some sheep that are sheep that are just in the sheep dip. You know what sheep dip is. Then, feed my sheep. Even some sheep that have gone astray feed my sheep. Even sheep that don't know their sheep feed my sheep. It is impossible to weary God's love. And it is impossible to weary that love in me if it springs from the one center, God. The love of God pays no attention to the distinctions made by the natural individuality. Who cares where they come from? Who cares where they're going? We care what God says to do. Feed my sheep. If I love my Lord, I have no business to be guided by natural temperament. I have to feed a sheep. There is no relief and no release from this commandment and this commission. It is what God has said to me, do you love me? Do you love Jesus? Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Beware of counterfeiting the love of God by working along a line of natural human sympathy because that will end in blaspheming the love of God. And this is the love of God in Christ Jesus. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And God, who spared not his Son, but gave his Son for the sins of the world, shall he not likewise cause us to be resurrected in life, who gave up our lives, that we might declare God's love to the world? Feed a sheep. Who are the sheep? Everyone else except you. Feed a sheep. That is what the utmost you can do. That is the almost everything that you could possibly be. That is the highest goal for your life. When you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. When you want to follow him like Peter wanted to love him and demonstrate that love in such a way that he would be the rock that God wanted him to be. Then what he must do, and he did, is what you too can do. Be the sheep. That's something.